Well, it's about time that I talked about this book because, well, it's not really a book, it's a myth, and it's really, really famous. Hello, fellow plot questers, it is I, Aaron the Plot Quester, and today I got this great book, Homer's Odyssey. And, well, let's get right on to it. So, uh, this is actually part one of a two part series for this book because number one is Hello Long, and number two, it literally is split into two books, like the Book of the Dead and the other one, the first one, so makes sense. And let's sort of get right into it. So, Odyssey, Odysseus is currently sort of trapped. After, you know, the Trojan War, he's trapped on Ogygia, which is the abode of Calypso, who is the daughter of Atlas. Atlas, as in the Titan, who is holding up the damn sky. And Calypso is sort of keeping Odysseus there, offering him immortality and all that, because she fell in love with him. And, unfortunately, he doesn't love her, because he's actually a faithful husband. Cough, cough, Zeus glares at Zeus. Anyways, yeah, so he's actually a faithful husband to Penelope, who's been waiting for him at Ithaca for, like, who knows how long. I actually don't remember. I'm fairly sure it's, like, over a decade now. And that, and he really, really wants to get back home. However, the, however, Poseidon is mad at him for killing a Cyclops, who tried to kill him, by the way. And so he's trapped there. Meanwhile, at back at home, things aren't looking too good. Sutures have been surrounding Penelope and trying to, you know, get her to marry them so they would become king and all that. And yeah, so they've been really, really, really annoying. And Tele Telemachus, who is the son of Odysseus, is sort of going mad because of this and he's really, really annoyed. However, at least one goddess has some sense, and that's Athene. Ath Athena, who is, you know, the goddess of wisdom. And in this book, she's described as the goddess of the flashing eyes. And basically, Athena, Athena sort of just goes, Guys, we've made the Odysseus go through, like, a lot. I mean, a lot of bad stuff, as in, you know, a war, then a really long voyage that ended up him getting stranded on an island with a goddess trying to seduct him for seven years. So maybe we should be nice to him and let him, let him go home, you know? And the gods were like, yeah, I guess. And Zeus was like, okay, fine. And so finally, the gods are being nice and letting Odysseus go. And Athena, Athena, meanwhile, starts her plan. She goes, goes to Telemachus, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that name right, right, in all probability I'm not, but let's just ignore that fact, and you can roast me down in the comment section if you want to. And basically what Athena does is she makes Telemachus go visit Odysseus' friends in order to find out if Odysseus is around, or if they have any news of him, like, you know, existing and not dead in some horrible, horrible way, and Telemachus sort of does that and talks to Odysseus' friends. Meanwhile, the suitors are coming up with a plan to kill him. Great! Awesome! Hopefully, Athena will prevent that because the gods are awesome that way. And meanwhile, Odysseus has finally managed to make a boat and get out because Calypso is like, okay, fine. Zeus is like, you gotta let him go, so I'm gonna do it. So Calypso does, does just that and let him, lets him go. And he does sort of got, get let go, but Poseidon's like, oh no no no, and sort of just goes, poof, and creates a huge storm, and he's trapped in it, and he thinks he's gonna die. However, with a little bit of divine intervention, cough, cough, Athena, and a couple other minor goddesses, he manages to reach Pakion? Pakia? I have no idea how to pronounce that, sorry. And the people of that land, I'm not gonna pronounce that name twice, knowing that I am pronouncing that wrong, are pretty nice actually, and they hear that hear out his story, and they're really hospital hospitable to him, and they're really really nice to him, and and so it's it's just really good. And there, Odysseus conveniently starts telling his story before Calypso, pre Calypso, which is you know his brush with death with Polyamus, the great Cyclops, son of Poseidon, the Earthquaker, and also his little visit at Kirk's Island. And they talk about that for a little bit, how we all know the famous story, like, right? How Odysseus said he was nobody, stabbed Polyamus in the eye, and basically tricked him into, you know, letting, becoming blind, and tricking him so that no other Cyclopses would come to help him. And he ran away, however, you know, that that's the reason why Poseidon hates him so much, mostly because Mostly because, you know, he, he blinded his son. I mean, I will be mad, but not to this extent. Actually, no, I would have killed him. Sorry. Um, yeah, moving on. Anyways, 
So he just tells the story and then the book sort of, it sort of halves there and it sort of ends for now. And the part two is the Book of the Dead where Kirk sort of sets, sort of says to um, Odysseus to, oh, you gotta go and you gotta go and talk to the dead and sort of get a prophecy or something. And now that, 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 that makes sense. And now we're moving on to the, the second book, which is called the Book of the Dead, apparently. And that's part two of the book. And a couple things, you know, I'm a big, big Rick Riordan fan. As you could probably tell, I mean, if you couldn't tell, then I don't know, maybe get some glasses. Um, but any, anyways, freak. Yeah, so anyways, I'm a big, 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 big Rick Riordan fan. And I, when I was reading this, I actually found out a lot of the stuff that Rick Riordan I thought just came up with, but I actually saw, or I actually started in here. Number one, Calypso and her, her clothes. She's actually really, really good at weaving, and it is mentioned here that Odysseus wore clothes from Calypso that were unbreakable. And the Curious of Olympus series, Leo Valdez, who never finds his love and eventually ends up dating Calypso, as we find out in the Trials of Apollo, Calypso sort of makes and weaves these really cool clothes that doesn't burn even with Leo's fire. Pfft, white fire. And she's a really skilled weaver and basically you can make anything with weaving. And I was like, whoa, that's cool. Did that really come from the best? But I, it actually did. So that, that's pretty cool. And also, the mist. The mist is a really major factor in the Percy Jackson series. It's this veil of reality that sort of just sort of covers magical things and magical items from the mortal eye. So us mortals don't go mad and start killing ourselves. And the point of that is, of course, so there will be mass chaos and also so that the realism is sort of there and it can sort of just explain it. However, that actually sort of comes out. When Athena leads Odysseus, Odysseus into the city, she actually sort of, it's described here and she says she surrounds Odysseus with mist. Sounds familiar, doesn't it? Because the goddesses or gods or demigods have certain control over the mist to try to cover up things. And that's pretty cool, I, I would say. I mean, that's actually, that's really, really cool. <laughs> and yeah, I didn't realize that those two things actually had bases in myth and in Homer's story. So I, I was really, really surprised, pleasantly surprised to find those things. And I don't know, I don't know if other people found them or I'm just hypersensitive to Rick Riordan stuff because I'm a huge, huge, huge fan of his bugs. I don't know, but I thought it was a cool little reference there. It's the reverse, but still, I, I read the full Rick Riordan books before reading the full Odyssey, you know. I read the short version, version and it's driving me mad because this story's really, really, really long. But still, you know, having fun. Anyways, that is pretty much it for the first volume. I actually have a, a more in-depth thematic analysis for the second book, because uh, for, for the second uh, episode of this series, mostly because I want to look at the book as a whole before talking about its themes. And that's pretty much it for today. And like always, your plot quester, Aaron the plot quester, have a great day. If you ever read The Odyssey or any of Rick Riordan's book, or a lot of Greek myth for that matter, they're pretty cool. I would recommend it. Even if you read the shortened version, they're pretty good, aren't they? So I would, I would tell you to read them, and they're good. And also, if you're a writer, then they will inspire you to greater ends. Bye! Have a great day.